Good morning, church family. What's going on? It's me, your boy, Mr. Ray. It is a beautiful Sunday morning, amen, August 16th, and um, I am happy to be here right now with you. Hey, on behalf of our staff, our leadership team, and all those in leadership at the Ford campus, we just wanna say welcome. Wherever you may be watching from, welcome. We are so glad that you would choose to worship with us. Our leadership team has been praying already, and we are believing that God is gonna minister to you this morning. We are not interested in just going through the motions and just coming to church to check it off of our list to say that we did that this week. We are interested in encountering and experiencing the real living God this morning, amen. And so we are believing um, that you would have an experience right where you are and that God would touch your life. Hey, before we get started, we just have a few announcements that I wanna share with you. Our first announcement is gonna come from our very own sister, Nelani. Uh, she's got an important announcement about our uh, missions team, and she's got an update about some important information that you want to hear. Go ahead, take it away, sister. Good morning, Ford family. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Nelani Sagan and I'm Vandenbosch, and I am your Ford representative to Madison's missions mobilization team. And first of all, on behalf of our team, I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you for your ongoing care, for your prayers, and for your financial support for our missionaries. We are so grateful. And today I wanted to give you a little bit of an update and also share with you an urgent need. As you may know, Madison has faithfully supported 12 missionary individuals and families over these many years. Many of them are grown from and rooted at Madison, long-term members of Madison. And we also all know that our giving across the board has fluctuated greatly as the global pandemic has impacted the way that we gather for church. And our missions budget has taken a significant hit. Madison has committed to $6,000 a month in support of our missionaries. And in the past, we've been able to keep a healthy cushion, mainly due to the second Sunday offering that's been designated to missions. But since April, these last four months, we've seen a decrease in our income and the average monthly intake has been about $3,660. And our bookkeeper has notified us that if our spending and income continues at this rate, that the missions budget will be drained in eight months. And so in order for us to make up the deficit and to continue to help support our missionaries, at least through the end of this year, we really need to see an income of about $7,600. And so we wanna put this in front of you, Ford family. We ask that you would join us in praying, praying over our missions budget, praying that God would open doors, praying that God would give us creative ways to be able to continue to help support our missionaries. And we wanna thank you again for those of you who are faithfully engaged in offering financial support. And for those of you who may be looking for some tangible ways to be involved and to, to offer support during this global pandemic. We want to invite you to consider this opportunity. And if anyone wants to talk to me, if you've got any questions, I would be more than happy to connect with you. If you are able to offer support, we ask that you would do that in one of these three ways. You are able to write a check to Madison and designate it to missions in the memo line. Or you can do this online through the website, or you can do this through text giving. We want to thank you so much for your continual prayers and your support. We're so grateful for the way that you continue to join Madison in missions around the world. God bless you. Hey, our next announcement is for all of our ladies. Ladies, women's ministry has been popping. There are good things happening there. Great momentum is actually uh, taking place. There's some excitement going on and that is going to continue because the very next women's ministry event is August 20th, okay? August 20th, the ladies are going back to Wilcox Park. They had such a great time. 6 p.m. ladies, all ladies are invited. August 20th, 6 p.m. and they want you to be a part of that. And if you have any questions at all, you can email this email address right here on the bottom of the screen. Um, and yeah, they will get you your uh, questions answered and information that you might need to be at that event. Our last announcement is blessing of the students is happening tonight. That is tonight at 6 p.m. Um, this is a virtual prayer event. 
all of you really want to encourage you to come and be involved you know this is a unique time in history i don't need to tell you that um none of us as adults know what it is to be starting a school year in the middle of a global pandemic and so this is a unique time where even the parents even our caregivers our coaches our teachers um, we need God like more than ever because we cannot actually say that we know what we are doing. And so the truth is, in all humility, um, we want to seek God more than ever during this time to make sure that our students know that every facet of their life, every facet of this journey that we are with them, that even though we may not have all the answers for them, we are with them and God is with them and that we have their back, that they are not alone. You know, anxiety and depression and those kind of things are really trying to have its way in some of our young people. Statistics are showing us and, and we just believe in our church that um, yeah, the enemy is not gonna have our students' minds, that our students have been given power, love, and a sound mind by Jesus, and we wanna declare and decree that over them. Again, that's 6 p.m. tonight. We'd love to have you be a part of that and make sure that you and your family know that we are standing with you as you start another school year. And speaking of starting another school year, hey, students and parents, I just wanna make sure that you know our youth ministry is currently in a new Bible plan titled Life is Hard. We know that life is hard, but hey, check it out. We don't have to have it easy to win in the kingdom of God. We don't have to have an obstacle-free life to win in the kingdom of God. And so we're in this um, Bible plan, this daily devotional. It's really short. If you haven't started with us, it's not too late to jump in. Contact me or, or go to our Instagram or our Facebook. You can get the link there. But we want you to be a part of this because we want to encourage you as you um, get ready to start a new school year, students, to have the strength and the perseverance to be able to go through whatever it is that may be thrown at you this school year, knowing that God has your back and that God is with you. So new Bible plan happening right now. Be a part of it. We want you with us because um, this is going to be a great school year. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, we appreciate you and thanks so much for you being here with us. God bless you. Let's get ready to worship. The word of the Lord from Psalm 108, verses 1 through 5. My heart, O God, is steadfast. I will sing and make music with my soul. Awake, harp and lyre. I will awaken the dawn. I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will sing of you among the peoples. For great is your love, higher than the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. Amen.
Search me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offense, offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. God is eternal. We are broken, but he is our healer. As we just sang, Jesus is our redeemer. He is mighty to save. 
So as we pray this morning, where do you need Jesus to be your redeemer today? Where do you need Jesus to be mighty to save? What I'd like to do as we pray together is to, is to pray some scripture as we recall how Jesus is mighty to save, how our God is sovereign over all that we face. Pray with me. The Egyptians, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots, horsemen and troops, pursued the Israelites and overtook them as they camped by the sea. And as Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and they cried out to the Lord. What is on your heart? What's on your mind right now? Where are you experiencing fear? Where do you feel trapped? Where are you experiencing worry? Because in that moment of feeling that way, what are you supposed to do? Well, scripture calls us. Watch what happens next from Exodus 14. Moses answered the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. I want to encourage you to place yourself in a posture of prayer. Maybe you want to kneel. Maybe you want to stand. Maybe you just want to raise your hands open like this. As you hear these truths just repeated over you for whatever you may be facing in this moment, hear this. Giving honor to God, who is the head of all of our lives, stand firm. You will see the deliverance of the Lord. The Lord will fight for you. supposed to do you need only to be still lift up a prayer of trusting God's sovereignty over your life over the local church over the city and over our world at this time Amen, amen, and amen. A huge welcome to everyone who is tuning in to this morning's worship and the word. We are continuing to walk through our summer sermon series as we explore and dive deep into God's word regarding his very names and applying his names to the context that we face. There have been several resources that we've been drawing on throughout this series And just as a bit of a a refresher, we've got here Dr. Tony Evans praying through the names of God. This has been a phenomenal resource. Uh, My wife and I, we love this book. It's called God Is by Pastor Renee Scheffler, a 50-day exploration on God's attributes. And then lastly, uh, a similar title, Praying Through the Names of God by Madison's very own and Spangler. And so if you would like one of these, if you'd like a copy of these, see the link below and let me know. Email me, see my contact information. We'd love to get you a copy of one of these devotions as you receive during this sermon series from God on his names. Because 2020 has been a year unlike any other, and we need a renewed understanding of who God is over our context, over right where you are right now. And so we need to dive deep into God's word as he shows us his characteristics, as he reveals to us 
his attributes, as he shows us his very names. And one of the consistent themes, the consistent name of God from generation, from Genesis all the way through Revelation is this immutable fact that our God is sovereign. So we need this word this morning because check it out. If any of you like me can struggle easily with worry or if you are anxious this morning, if you're trying to find some footing this morning, I believe that God is speaking to you this truth about who he is over your life of hearing God say, I am sovereign. Listen, Ford family, I am sovereign over your life. So usually what I do is that I'll stay in one passage and just go verse by verse exegetically. But what I was sensing in preparation for this week is that I'd like to share a wide perspective from the Old Testament to the New Testament, some life-altering, heart-transforming truths, these verses in Scripture that show us how God is sovereign. And so I want to preach three points for you this morning. Number one, trust that God is sovereign. Number two, we want to see how God's sovereignty, how it transforms our heart. And then lastly, we're going to see how God's sovereignty gives us hope. So let's begin with the first point this morning. Number one, trust that God is sovereign. Isaiah 46 says, remember the former things of old. For I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand and I will accomplish all my purpose. I absolutely love this one because the scripture is sharing with us regarding God's sovereignty that the same God who created all the galaxies in the universe that we see in the nighttime is the same God who can be trusted with the details that we face. The same God who created the land and the sea and the sky and the stars is the same God who knows exactly what we need, who knows exactly what we are facing today. We need constant reminders of this. I know I can worry just as much as anybody else. I wake up anxious. It's not hard. It just comes naturally to me. It's probably something that I've inherited or it's more likely because of sin in my heart and my mind where I need the gospel every single day. So this message on God's sovereignty over the situations that we face, I know I'm preaching to myself today, but I know it's not just my problem. Worry can easily leak into any stage of life where we wonder, is God truly sovereign? Because of all the changes and the things that we face within life, uh, I loved how the teacher of my son in preparation for school that starts up in two weeks mentioned this as a way to get ready for school. Check it out. I don't have many answers for exactly how things will go this fall at school. And so my new, most used four words lately seem to be, I don't know yet. And so if you are a teacher, if you're a student, if you're in administration of any kind, given the unknown nature of things lately, there are a lot of, I don't know yet. <laughs> and so here's what can easily happen. Because there are many, I don't know yet, that can lead into a place. It can lead into a place of worry. And we also have to be cognizant of the things that can actually be sources of worry for us in our society today. All right, so here's a couple of them. Number one, media. Media markets worry. They have it down to a science where headlines can be defined in a way that has a fear tactic that raises our anxiety. And then during commercial break, there's actually an advertisement for antidepressants right? It's just one large circle very easily. Also, sleeping medication right now during COVID is on the rise 34%. It continues to spike. And then we have our technology, our phones that neatly and nicely organizes all of our worry for us in one convenient place. So from our calendar to our email to our social media, 
if we're not careful or assess those levels, what can happen is that are our hearts being shaped spiritually in a positive way by how much our phones can increase our worry. In fact, we can be OCD over our phones where we worry about the thing that really often can be the source of our worry. So how do we respond to this? How do we deal with increasing worry within our lives? We need to be reminded of the truths, of the names and the attributes of who God says he is that we've been exploring over the course of our summer sermon series. Is anything too hard for God? No. Does God promise to be with you at all times because he is omnipresent? Yes. Does God love you infinitely? Yes. Does God know all of your troubles? Yes, absolutely. And here's the one that brings all of this home for us today. Our God is sovereign. And when we say simply that God is sovereign, what we say is that he reigns. He reigns over all things. And so when we place our trust in God's sovereignty, what that brings, what that gives for us is security and assurance and comfort. And it then allows us to share that trust with others, encouraging others to place their trust in God's sovereignty and his love. I want to give a big shout out to Mr. Ray, who sent this word of encouragement for parents and caregivers as a word for youth ministry looking forward going into this fall. Check this out. Remember, as a parent or caregiver, God has given you the amazing honor of molding, but also growing alongside your student. Your humility, support, and prayers go a long way towards helping your students become and stay mentally and emotionally and spiritually sharp during this time. Your teen may not tell you directly, but they appreciate your presence. In a time where so much is moving and changing, they depend on your consistent display of the compassion of Jesus Christ in their lives. This is a huge opportunity right now to share the compassion of Jesus Christ. Because here's what happens. There is a result that when we share the compassion of Jesus, a result, a conclusion is trust in the sovereignty of God. It goes down deep into our hearts. For example, if you're waiting to hear back some news regarding a diagnosis or a medical report or to hear something back from a doctor, trust the sovereignty of God. If you're waiting on a job, if you're waiting for some type of breakthrough around work or business right now, trust the sovereignty of of God. If you are deeply concerned right now over a loved one, a spouse, a child, trust the sovereignty of God. However, usually right about this time, a very important question comes up. As we continue to explore the sovereignty of God, this is a very significant question, and it usually goes like this. Does sovereignty mean everything that happens is God's perfect will? This is a very important question. It's a deep question, and it's also been around for a very long time. And I've been thinking about it, and it's made my head hurt a little bit. But in some research, I've learned that as theologians have been responding to this question, oftentimes they make a distinction that there is a difference between God's permissive will and God's perfect will. That God permits us to make decisions, that because of our freedom, often lead to sin and mistakes and brokenness. But it is God's perfect design, God's perfect will, that will always prevail. And this is a consistent theme throughout Scripture. Ecclesiastes 3.11 says this, He has made everything beautiful in its time, a powerful verse and a deep promise that we can hold to, which reminds me of the old catechism, which says, what is your only comfort in life and in death? That you are not your own, but that you belong to your faithful savior, Jesus Christ, who watches over us in such a way that absolutely nothing can happen to us except for the will of our father in heaven. 
absolutely powerful for us today. Um, let me just break this down in a very basic analogy and just hold tight with me. I want you to imagine that all of us are on a cruise. Social distancing is now a memory and we are on a cruise all together. The captain permits freedom to do what you would like to do. Maybe you'd like to go to the buffet, just smash some food. Maybe you want to play bingo, jump in the pool, gamble. You are permitted freedom to enjoy and make decisions on this cruise ship. But here's the thing, the captain is sovereign. He's already made a decision and nothing as the old King James version would say, nothing can thwart that decision that the captain is sovereign overall, even though we are permitted freedom. Nothing can redirect the direction that God has chosen. He is sovereign overall. And a more biblical way to approach this is to just flip, go to the end of the Bible and spend just a couple of minutes in Revelation. I love what the worship leader Israel Houghton, he says that the battle's fixed that we know how things will end. In Revelation, we see a very clear picture of the ultimate battle between heaven and hell, between Jesus and Satan. And we see how things end. There is victory, complete and total victory in Christ Jesus, our Lord. In fact, Revelation says that in Christ, there will be no more death, no more pain, no more guilt, no more shame, no more tears for the old order of things has passed and the new order has come. God is indeed sovereign over everything. I just want to share this with you this morning from the core of my heart. And Paul says that we have been given a gift. We've been given freedom. May we use our freedom to not indulge in the sinful nature, but to give glory to God in all things. In fact, in the letter to the Romans, Paul, he's going off about how sovereign God is. And he goes chapter after chapter after chapter. And after like three or four chapters, at the end of it, he just throws up his hands in worship to God. And because of how sovereign he is, he says the following. Oh, the depths of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable his judgments and his paths beyond tracing out. Who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor? Who has ever given to God that God should repay them? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. So my first point for you this morning is to trust that God is sovereign. And my second point for us today is simply this, that God's sovereignty transforms our heart. So here's what I'd like to do for, for a moment is just to reflect together, to let the Holy Spirit convict our hearts through God's word. As we recall Psalm 139, where King David says the following, let's apply this to ourselves. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me, and my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. David here in this Psalm, he's taking responsibility for the things that are shaking him up, for the things that he's worried about. Because it's so easy to worry first about other people's worry. <laughs> and check this out, we weren't wired to have the whole conversation of human history go off in our back pocket like a sniper wondering, okay, look what this person said. Look what this person has done. Of course, we're freaking out and numbing ourselves because oftentimes the enemy has us on tether in our back pocket and we don't even know about it. You know, we're, we're here on Sunday morning for about 56 minutes, but we know that there are hours of other messages through media that is designed to hardwire the way that we think and live. And it's easy then to worry about worry externally and to worry about what other folks are worried about. And King David here in Psalm 139, he takes responsibility for what he is facing in here. He's not concerned about the economy or King Saul and his craziness or some of his crazy teenagers. No, he's saying, search me, 
know me, test me, that nothing can change out here until you change first, God, what's going on in here. Not what's out there, but it's what's in here that's making me anxious. That's why Jesus on the Sermon on the Mount, when he is surrounded by a massive crowd, he addresses this very same principle. He says this, Jesus said this, can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? A deep, a profound question and one that we need to let rest on our hearts today. And yet worry also connects in another way to the sovereignty of God, which is that worry has a good side, an important side. Uh, Worry is a good thing that prevents my daughter, me running out with a protective instinct that turns on when she's about to run across the street, when she's about, you know, to perhaps hurt herself, fall down the stairs, or if she's about to down just a whole bottle of adult medication. I need to be worried over that, right? The Apostle Paul, when he shows up into Athens, it said that it says that he worried that he his soul was anxious. He was tormented over how much idolatry he saw that was going on, idol worship that was going on in Athens. And so worry leads to problem solving. That's what it's supposed to do. But oftentimes it leads to another place of problem generating because it leads to something that we're all familiar with, which is the fear of the unknown. And here's what Jesus says that transforms our heart and connects us to his sovereignty. Jesus says this, Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything that you need. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God, his kingdom. And today in the world, there are many kingdoms and a lot of kings who like to lead their kingdoms in such a way to keep people in a constant state of worry, either over the economy, over food, over decisions. But Jesus leads the kingdom of God in a completely different way where he desires his people to be free from worry, being free from what is anxious and to know and to trust God's sovereignty, God's sovereignty over all things, gives us a foundation, a place where we can thrive for him and to pursue his kingdom today. So the first thing we looked at today was simply trust God's sovereignty. Then we looked at point number two, that God's sovereignty transforms our heart. And let's jump into the third point today, which is this, God's sovereignty gives us hope. The great Romans 8, 28 says this. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. When you believe in this, when you trust this, when you hold on to this, what it does is that it just pumps into your veins hope. Hope in the Lord. When you trust the sovereignty of God, it just pours, it pumps into your veins, into your life, into your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Hope in God. Let's revisit this again, going one phrase at a time. We know this is a truth that we can hold to with certainty. God works. He is the one who makes it happen. That I don't need to worry if I don't have a plan or fully see the picture. He is the one who turns it around. All things, wherever you're at right now, just repeat that out loud. Say, all things. When God says, All things, he means all things. There's a powerful song called Nothing is Wasted. Crank it up this week. Look it up that nothing, absolutely nothing is wasted in his way and his plan. And then it says, for good according to his purpose. God has a purpose. And this verse that we've seen, it just builds up into the very next verse. Romans 8, 29, which explains that God's sovereign plan is to make you more like Jesus. Check it out. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son. That the sovereignty of God pours hope into our lives. Why? 
because he works all things out for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose to be like Jesus Christ. So the sovereignty of God, what it does is that it points to, it points us to Jesus. It points us to the gospel message that in Jesus Christ, he sees us. He sees us right where we are at. And because of our brokenness, because of sin, we are in radical need of a savior. We are in need of forgiveness and we are in need of new life. And the sovereignty of God is a promise that points us to the purchased sacrifice of Jesus Christ, his shed blood to give us new life in him. And yet here is the reality. A response to the gospel, a response to believing in Jesus and following him and being a part of the community of faith. This is a decision. This is a decision that God permits you to make on your own. You have been given freedom. What will you do with that freedom? What will you do with that influence? Maybe today you are a believer and you are longing to go more deeply in trusting the sovereignty of God and to share his trust so that people may grow in the hope of Jesus and in the compassion of Jesus. Maybe you're on the fence today, but today now, because of the reality of where you are at, it is a day of saying yes on this very Sunday of accepting and believing and inviting Jesus into your life to give you new life to the full so that you experience the practical reality and how much it changes our perspective of how God is sovereign. If you need to write something down uh, to just remind you of something today regarding God's sovereignty, this one you can take home to the bank with you. It is simply this. God has already figured out the figuring out. That's what God's sovereignty reminds us of. And just as he watches over the birds of the air, how much more does he watch after you? And that verse, that truth that we receive from Jesus has been around the Ford campus for a long time. I want to go way back, maybe like eight or nine years ago, we had an art teacher, Jonathan Quist, and he had a class of art students, local high schoolers, who came to the Ford School and created all sorts of different artwork, maybe five or six different murals in the whole school. And this verse meant a lot to him and he wanted to share it uh, in a creative way for the school. And it's been a while since we've been in the school, but if you've ever been up to the second floor, you are going to see a picture, a reminder of the gospel at work through the sovereignty of God. Because you'll see this, which is a picture of Raul, who was on our soccer team at the time, and he is holding a sparrow which is a reference to Jesus, where he says, just as much as I watch over the birds of the air, how much more do I watch over your life? So may this morning we be a people who seek first the kingdom of God. May we be a people who place our trust in God's sovereignty, because there's a conclusion to that. And the conclusion is hope in him and a transformed heart, where we can then tell the enemy, listen, enemy, you cannot set up shop in here. You cannot be in here. This is not your property. No, this heart, soul, mind, and strength belongs to Jesus from this life into the next, because he is sovereign over all. We can place our trust and hope in him. Here's a very practical take home um, uh, exercise to do where whatever issue that might trigger worry for you, write it down, write it on a sheet of paper and then fold it up and place it in a small box, like a Kleenex box or something like that. And that's called the give it to Jesus box. We've done this in our household in different times and seasons. And anytime you sent something that can increase any kind of fear, anxiety, or, or worry, place it in that box. Give it to Jesus. And then here's what you'll see happen. Over the weeks, over the months, you will see the sovereignty of God unravel before you. Because our God is a God who can be trusted in all things. He's a great way maker, promise keeper. He is the light in the darkness. So hear this. Have this be just heralded over your heart today from Ephesians 2.10. For we are his workmanship, 
created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared before that we would walk in them. Because of the sovereignty of God, we are his workmanship. And we have the honor, we have the privilege, the Holy Spirit enables us to do the good works that he has prepared in advance for us to do. May we be a people who seek first the kingdom of God, trust his sovereignty, and walk in his ways. And wherever you may be at, you are not alone. Let's pray now. Let's just receive from the Holy Spirit together. Please repeat after me. And let's pray this prayer. Pray with me, church. You may lift your hands if you want as well. Heavenly Father, one more time, everybody, just speak it out, declare it wherever you're at. Heavenly Father, search me, reveal to me where worry is preventing me from your peace. Thank you, Lord for being sovereign over all. Amen, amen, and amen. When we seek the kingdom of God and we trust in his sovereignty, he pours into our lives hope and he transforms our heart. It is a life of freedom. It is a life of purpose because when we trust his sovereignty, we're actually fulfilling our very purpose itself. We're fulfilling our design. Our design is to be a people who worship the Lord, who glorify him, who walk in obedience to him, who believe his gospel and walk by faith step by step in him. Let me close with an encouragement, another scripture that reminds us of the sovereignty of God from Philippians 4. Paul says the following, and just declare this, receive this over any storm, over anything that you may be facing. Paul says this, rejoice. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. Why? Because the Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in prayer and petition and thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I pray that you've been blessed by today's message on God's sovereignty, his name. As a people, we are called to trust God's sovereignty, that God's sovereignty transforms our hearts as well as it gives us hope. I'm going to ask that you stand to your feet to receive today's blessing wherever you may be at. Open your hands to receive from the Lord. If you want to follow up in any way by prayer, if you would like to grow more deeply in your walk with Jesus Christ, if you would like to receive Jesus Christ in prayer for the first time, join me and another prayer servant right after service in the Zoom link that's in the description below. We would love to see you there and to pray and to connect together and to receive more deeply the sovereignty of God. So God's blessing for us today, it comes down to us like rain. We just receive it, not through any merit of our own. It comes to us like rain. We just receive it. Walk in today's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord turn his face to shine upon you. May this be a week of deep and strong, obedient trust in the sovereignty of God. And may you know that God's sovereignty transforms our hearts so that you might walk in his purposes and that you might receive more deeply hope in him. Know that God the Father loves you. Jesus Christ has given his life for you and the Holy Spirit is with you to guide you forward to pursue and seek first the kingdom of God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen, amen, and amen. We love you. We miss you. Can't wait to see you next week. Much love and God bless.